So in this video, I'm going to do an unboxing installation and give you some of my first impressions of the Velo Orange flat pack rack. So let's check it out. So the flat pack rack is what's known as a demi portour rack. So slightly smaller than a full on portour rack. You can use it with both two or four stays. If you use it with just two stays, the load capacity is 12 pounds. And if you use it with four stays, the stated load capacity is 17 pounds. The rack is a little bit on the spinny side at $175, but I have to tell you guys, so far I've been really impressed by the fit and finish and just how the rack installs. When you get it, as the name suggests, the rack comes in a flat pack box. This is really one of the cool features about this rack because if you have to travel and you want to carry a rack with you, you can really break it down so it can fit inside a bike box or your carry-on luggage. When you open it up, it comes with all the things and I know it looks a little bit intimidating at first, but once you open it up and follow their online instructions, it's actually not too bad. So basically it comes with a tubular rack platform and you have the option of putting a tombstone on the back so you can slip your rando bag on there. Or if you have a rando bag that uses a decaler, you can put that backstop as well. So really cool that you have this kind of functionality. I think this is the first time I've seen anything like this on any rack. Once you choose your preferred backstop, that just screws on the back and that's about it for that part. To install it, you have to attach what are called darumas, which are basically these aluminum uh, blocks which hold the respective stays. You'll want one daruma in the rear center of the rack. This will attach to the small rod that you mount to the fork crown of your bike. The instructions online show the rod above the crown hole, but on the bike I mounted it on, which is the Crest Bambora, there wasn't space there. So I mounted it upside down and so far it doesn't seem to be a big deal. So depending on uh, kind of the geometry of your fork crown, you might have to adjust how you mount it. I found that the easiest way for me to set up the rack was to mount the central Daruma uh, on the rear of the rack and then mount the two Darumas on the front of the rack. So having those pre-installed, so once you have the rack on the bike, you don't have to juggle all those screws holding it together. The Darumas are on a rail, so there is some kind of adjustability in moving them inwards. But I think for most purposes, you're gonna have them in the outermost setting. So with the Darumas installed, the next step I did was attach that rod that goes on uh, the crown of the fork. Once that was on there, I took the rack and positioned that on that rod and tighten it down and it held the rack in place, making it a lot easier to mount the other stays. This is the first rack I've ever installed which had a solid rod that mounts to the fork crown and I have to say, I think it's super convenient, a lot more rigid and adjustable than the flexible uh, rectangular flat stays that you usually see on a rack. The rack comes with four total stays that you can use either all at once or just two. I opted to just use two of them. Stays themselves have different degrees of bend. So you can really fine tune it to how wide your rack is. I quickly eyeballed how much I had to cut and marked it with a Sharpie. Then I used one of my favorite tricks and that is using a tube cutter to cut the stay instead of a hacksaw. Using a tube cutter just gives you a lot more fine control and leaves less burrs on the end of the stay. One nice thing about these stays is that they are solid tubular stays. Uh, one of my complaints with the crest rack is that the stays were hollow, so it left this big open gap for water to just run through if you couldn't use the rubber end cap. With the stays cut, the last step was to just simply attach the stay to the fork blade and slip it through the Daruma and tighten everything down, making sure it was nice and level. Again, having that big rod poking out of the fork crown made this part super easy. So despite its initial complexity, when you take it out of the flat pack box, it's actually pretty simple to install. And again, Velo Orange does have instructions on their website that are, that, that are pretty easy to follow. So with the rack installed, the last thing to do was to, of course, test it out with my Swift Industries Rando bag, and it slipped over the tombstone just fine, and the Velcro straps on the bottom wrapped around the innermost tubes of the rack. So, so far, so good. Uh, surprisingly, even though the rack is larger and it has uh, solid stays, it actually weighs less than the crust uh, rack that I had on previously. The crust rack weighed in at about 643 grams and the Velo Orange flat pack rack weighs in at about 540 grams. Not that that really matters, but I know some of you are weight weenies out there. 
for whatever reason. In terms of light mounts, it only has one and that's in the front. And that's probably the only bummer thing about this rack for me. I would have preferred if it had light mount options on the side actually. Uh, the, the Dynamo light I have is designed to mount upside down. And if I put it on the center, it's a little bit close. So I'll, I'll have to fashion some kind of a uh, little standoff for it. Overall, the fit and finish of the rack is just superb. It's really nicely done. The stays feel really solid and secure. The Darumas have good gripping strength and are really easy to adjust. And the installation, although it looked intimidating at first, was surprisingly easy. This is a great rack if, of course, you have a rando bag or if you want a support for uh, a big bike packing bag, or if you want to go basket packing. It looks super classy, super functional. And if you travel a lot with your bike, it has the added benefit of being uh, able to be flat packed as the name suggests. If you guys have any other questions about the rack, leave those in the comments below. Uh, be sure to look for a more longer term review after I've had a chance to take it out on a couple rides with different bags. If you want to learn about more bike accessories, check out this playlist. And as always, keep the supple side down.